So Nick Perkat currently leading an extraordinary motor race. Perkat has done the job. Crowd rises. The Clipsal 500 winner of 2016 is Nick Perkat, the 27-year-old from Adelaide for Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport. The 2016 V8 Supercars Clipsal 500 Adelaide Race 3 podium. Lucas, firstly, congratulations on the team's first win at the Clipsal 500. Huge achievement. Yeah, it was amazing. You know, it's been a long time coming. Um, you know, like we've been around, both of us been around for a few years, and, and you've, you've definitely even yourself seen like, the ups and downs of the teams and stuff, and uh, all the guys as well. Like, you know, we put in such a massive effort. And for Nick, you know, he's helped build the team up over the last, you know, year and 18 months, and it's just fantastic for the whole group, you know. Back to where it all began, 2010. It was Abu Dhabi, your first race as a, as a team owner. You were the Gulf Western Oils team. Daniel Gaunt was your driver. You were 21 years old, youngest ever team owner. Did you really know what you were getting yourself into? I thought I knew everything and knew, you know, literally knew nothing. It's, it's been a massive journey and, and I've, um, you know, I've, as a 21 year old, you know, like I was empo employed, you know, eight or nine people and now I've got 25. So, you know, now I've been 26 and I've, I've learned a hell of a lot and I've, I suppose I've learned probably the hard way by making mistakes and stuff. But yeah, God, it's, um, it's, been, a, it's been a long, long journey. I think you're up to 11 drivers that you've had driving for your team. You've had two cars, one car. Do you think you've kind of got it right now? Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. I think I've got, uh, like, you know, the continuity is great with having Nick for a second year. That's the first big point, which really helped the whole team. Uh, I'm fortunate to have some great people around me, um, you know, family members and also, uh, you know, even a sponsor like Phil Monday, who's actually, he's more than a sponsor. He's always, he's so, his he employs 250 people and he's just kind of shared some of his, his, his advice on how to deal with people um, in, with, uh, with the race team. And funny enough, I do find some people actually do like me. You know, it's a weird feeling, but um, <laughs> I, I do. And the people, you know, even they continually are trying to help me um, and no, no, um, no benefit for themselves other than they just want to see me succeed, so yeah. You yourself were a promising young race car driver and, and many people may not know as to why and how you became to be in a wheelchair. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, it was, uh, you know, eight years ago, you know, in, uh, in 2008, I was uh, running the Australian Formula 4 Championship and then uh, in the final round at Oran Park, I had a big, you know, rather large accident and then I broke my C4-5 um, in my neck and then unfortunately, um, uh, you know, now I'm, I suppose a quadriplegic and threw out the, like, the ambulance out of the hospital and at the hospital and I had my brother there and, um, and my, uh, my old, uh, the, the boss of my old teammate special, Michael Ritter. And, and I think I said to my brother, like, you know, I, uh, it's, I knew something that's pretty, you know, seriously wrong, so, mm. I understand you weren't able to speak for quite a significant period of time as well. Because I had, like, a, a collapsed lung uh, due to the accident. So, um, yeah, like, I could only, I could not like, speak, so it's really kind of mouth letters and, and using, like, you know, a whiteboard and, and going on the alphabet and trying to spell out words and stuff. So, yeah, it's a pretty tough time, obviously, for everyone involved and, um, and me, but, yeah, I don't know, like, this is what it is. I've moved on with it pretty much and um, tried to make the most of it. You know, like, without, kind of, like, people like my brother and, and, and father and mother and that kind of thing, you know, I'd, you know, it'd be a very different scenario, but, uh, yeah. At what point did you decide that you were going to undertake this massive step and, and want to be a team owner and, 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 and embark on this challenge? You know, when you're involved in something that you, you've got to be passionate about, it's very hard. Well, for me, even, even the accident didn't take away my passion for it. So, I don't, I don't know, it was, uh, what was, it was Bathurst 2009. Um, I just kind of said to my brother and my father, um, you know, I've got this idea, I want to, want to, yeah, I want to put this together. And then it was only a month later um, that we kind of managed to put some deals together and, 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 and secure like a, a racing entitlements contract from, uh, from Tasman Motorsport. And then, yeah, it kicked off on the whole challenge, which is, you know, for the cars. And, and, and LDM was born um, in, you know, November 2009. You've had a race win this year already. What do you see and what's the expectations for Lucas Dumbrow Motorsport 2016? Yeah, I think this year definitely we, we really need to focus on having two cars in the top, you know, 10 or 12. And then uh, when there's those chances for results, that's when we'll grab them, you know? Lucas, we appreciate your open and honesty in this interview and we wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. Cheers.